Well, welcome back to the Timeline Ranch. Figured I'd show you how some of the native plants are dealing with this exceptional drought we have here at the ranch. We've had a half inch of rain this calendar year, or 13 millimeters, however you'd like to say it. Let's take a look. Here's one of the species of prickly pear we have. You can see very little moisture in the pads. You can see the underlying veins, the main structure of the, the pads. This is a, a different type of prickly pear. You can see the same thing, the underlying structure of it. This one has it very defined. You can see they're almost completely dry. Just holding on, waiting for it to happen. The Ocotillo really don't show too many signs of it. You can see it's still green here on the stem. So what it does, when you get about a half inch of rain, it'll leaf out. It has little leaves right here waiting to come out. It'll leaf out, and then when it starts to dry up, it'll drop its leaves. The stem photosynthesizes as well, so that's how it keeps energy coming in or making energy during the exceptional dry season. This is Yakov Faxaniana. You can see how it slowly draws the moisture out of the leaves towards the top. And that's how it holds on. Eventually it'll die all the way up to the top and die completely if it doesn't get any rain. This one looks a little better. It must be tapped into a little bit of moisture there. This is the fatter and divided ends. You can see it's starting to yellow out. Normally it would be a much darker shade of green. Well, this is a New Mexico olive. You can see it doesn't have any leaves on the upper portion. And it'll just keep dropping them all the way down to the base of it. It's got a few leaves here. See, it looks, they're all falling off though. Looks like it's raining when you touch it. A little scrub oak. It's getting dry. It'll start dropping its leaves back to the base as well. You see the lower portion still has some green leaves down there. The Sotol's tapped into a little bit of water here. It's still coming out from the bottom of this rock bed. See the upper portion of this New Mexico olive has dropped its leaves as well here by the building. The lower portion has leaves still. It'll keep doing that until it goes all the way to the ground if it has to. We're walking down the creek right now. Feeds the pond. So this, the fatter and divided it's it's just about to die if it doesn't get any moisture. Creosote has some deeper roots. It's still tapped into a little bit.
So you can see the white throated wood rats are harvesting these leaves to get moisture. You know, this yucca faxonianna. They're just about eating this little one here to the point that it's going to die. Uh, looks like it is, it has died. Well, it is what it is. It's nature for you. We're getting down here closer to that big leaky weir that I put. And you can see this one. This creosote looks a lot better. Has a little green to it still. These yuccas look real good. You can see this, the fatter nevodidens here is getting some moisture. It still has a nice green to it. Creosote's just to the outer edge aren't getting as much moisture though. They don't look as good. You see this New Mexico olive has quite a few more leaves on it. This is the other mesquite that I'm turning into a tree slowly. It's tapped into that moisture from the sleeky weir as well. It's starting to go dormant though. It grew a little bit this year. And we're back here at the pond. You can see the bacchus looks real good here. Bacchus silifolia still flowering. It's an evergreen. Yeah, it's looking a lot better right here. The moisture still seeping out from this leaky weir into the pond. Hopefully by the end of this trip, if I can get the machine back in time, I'll have this all down to 25 feet deep and it'll hold water for at least two years without any rain. Well, that's how the native plants are looking around here at the ranch in this exceptional drought. I'll see you on the next one.